came up for a site visit to see which bit of the building I would like to use. And I know the building, but I, it was interesting on that first visit. I'd forgotten how busy the upstairs space was in terms of ceiling. You know, there's so many layers of metal and grey and line, straight line. And I kind of felt that I couldn't produce anything for that space. There's an African one down here, which is, it's not a trap so much as something you, you drop over the, over the fish um, in the lake, in lakes. But it's a lovely thing. And it, it actually, the thing that um, interests me about it, as well as the spaces and all that kind of thing, partly the technique, how they've hooked the grass. You know, as you get wider, you have to have extra strands, and they've just sort of bent a bit of grass and hooked it over the top. So that's a really beautiful way of doing it. I think that to do this with a very good use of material probably demands technical knowledge as well beforehand. So that I do actually think that you do this better if you've made a lot of very formal traditional baskets as well. Not everybody, of course, but I think it helps. It certainly has helped me. Well, my training first started in Niigata, uh, a little bit in the northern part of mainland Japan. Uh, from there, I moved to Beppu, which is uh, on, in Shikoku Island. Down in Japan. From there, I, I studied under a bamboo specialist workshop. Once I finished this, my training, I moved back to Tokyo, where I studied under another bamboo master. From there, I was looking for a bamboo supplier near, in or near around Tokyo, but discovered in the telephone book that there was only the closest one in Chiba, and I just decided to move there. But after two, three years or so, the supplier went bust, and from there, I discovered, well, why not grow my own bamboo? So I moved to another part of Chiba, where there's a whole mountain full of bamboo. And from then on, I've been growing and using the bamboo that I, that I cultivate. Camellia brought in by the southerners is said to sort of, in a way, represent the deep memory of the Japanese, the Jomon Japanese. And so from that concept, in terms of the, the lower back of the brain, where uh, memories from decades, generations, centuries ago are stored. I thought it was a, an appropriate title to give to my work. So back in October 2010, um, I came to the Sainsbury Centre to look at the site and to consider creating a piece of work really that would really physically be attached to the structure of the building and a piece of work that would almost leap out of the exhibition space and into, um, into the, the space in the rest of the building. The professors and lecturers that invited me and brought me into the show were interested in the way that my work sometimes has a bit of a, a sort of parasites feeling to it. You know, it could have this sort of darker overtone and this sense that it is um, taking over somehow and it's growing out of the space. The piece of work will take me about a week to make, but it's made out of willow, it's Somerset willow. Uh, a variety called Flanders Red, which has a beautiful sort of waxy uh, texture and, and feeling. Um, and the whole thing has been constructed here. And because my work is a little bit 
about attachment and how forms like nests, beehives, particularly wasps' nests, how they use other objects to adhere to. Uh, therefore, my work has been pieced together on site, on scaffold, and it clings to the wall. So it's built piece by piece, curve by curve, knot by knot. Um, I'd like the work to feel like it is fluid and as if it has grown all by itself. Maybe even that if you turn your back it'll grow a bit further. But also I quite like the strength that it may appear to have so um, you know it should sort of have some muscle in it somewhere. <laughs> right, um, yeah I was, uh, I was approached by the uh, Sainsbury Centre they were uh, talking about having uh, putting on an exhibition uh, to do with basketry and there was an area within the um, exhibition space that was to do with fish traps and they had the idea that they wanted to have um, some panels horizontally above the uh, space so that when light was cast through it, it cast sort of patterns uh, to give the, the sense and, and the feeling that uh, you were inside a trap whilst in that area. So I sort of thought about what to do, um, how you would need something that was quite an open weave. Um, and then I thought about, um, um, I think they're sort of fish traps that you get um, up the Bristol estuary on the, on the mud flats. They're like conical things, uh, but they have a very spirally open weave to them that holds the sticks together. And just sort of transferred that to something flat. Um, so, and with, in, in order to do that, uh, you have to use a particular sort of weave, which is a sort of pairing. It's called pairing, uh, and it's, as you're weaving, you're twisting, and it holds each upright uh, in place. Um, so this this is one of the panels, um, sort of pretty much constructed. I've just got to finish it off by picking off all the bits and then just turn it over and uh, make another um, border like this on the top. <laughs> this particular willow that I'm working with is fresh willow so it's very pliable. It's just a constant uh, judging as you're going along, as you're weaving it to make sure that um, the rod, uh, these uprights are staying in the right place, and sometimes that might mean that you put in a uh, when you might put in a slightly thicker rod horizontally, so that it pulls everything that way, or a lighter one, so that it, so that things come back. And then, as you uh, hopefully as you as, as you are going along, the the thing just stays on a nice uh, plane. It's it's a very contemplative process at its best, so that um, I enjoy being in here in this workshop. It's quite, it feels quite calm to me, although it may not look rather chaotic. Um, I sort of feel calm in the middle of it all. And um, this one, when I was making it the other day, there's a kind of rhythm to the work, the, the attachments of these, these things, these ties, they're called scallums, and they're extremely traditional, but not done quite like this but there's a very pleasing rhythm in cutting the you thin off the ends of the willows into these tails and bend them round and attach them um, there's a very pleasing sense of continuity about it I suppose leaving the, the ends on gives it a kind of flock of birds feel to it which was a surprise, but I rather like it. Or maybe a flock of butterflies or something. There's a sort of balance between this tremendous control and that freedom out there. And, I, and this is somewhere in between. And I quite enjoyed that. And I quite enjoyed that series of, of these sort of bubbles. I also hope that it's got some sort of sense of amusement about it. I don't expect people to take it very seriously. And I don't take it very seriously myself. And the one over here, which has got all sorts of clothes pegs and things on it, I can't, I can't at the moment work out how to get it as I like it. It's been a bit of a frustration. I thought I had and then I didn't, but it's coming. So it doesn't yet feel comfortable with itself.
and I don't feel comfortable with it. The title is one of the first things that I have to do with it. And the other thing is one of the other things that I have to do with it. When the center first approached to ask about a commission on my work, I conceived the Sainsbury Center as, as the head of, a, of an existing body. Um, and this piece here is uh, one of the two that form an entire sort of whole piece. The rose window, this piece here, is meant to represent the eye of the building and the camellia in the inner part of the building is considered the, the brain. In regards to this work here, the structure uh, compared to the other work, it's more transparent. The relationship between the bamboo and its background that you can see through the object is very important. So the interplay between the bamboo and its background is probably the, the key to this work. The biggest difficulty is uh, working with the strength, the, the robustness of the bamboo. So when you conceive the design and you put it on the ground and you make it, that's one thing. But to then put it up into the space, then it, it, you never know the outcome of how the material is going to hold up to gravity and the, the way it's being hung, the installation. The, the thick part is the actual trunk bamboo, and that's split into eight equal pieces. And out of that, four pieces are used here. And then the thinner, the woven bits, uh, it's also from the trunk of the bamboo, split into 50 pieces. And I use two bamboos worth, so you see um, 100 strips of bamboos being woven throughout. And so when I decided to put the work here, because the building represents a head, uh, I wanted to put an eye where the, it's perceiving things through the outside world inwards. So the eye and the brain and the interplay between the two. The way in which I feel I want to attach these forms to a site is a complete driving force. I have to have to tangle my way into these objects. That's the only the only way I can creatively approach a project. Um, I think there's um, there's certainly a method within um, the process, and the you know I have learnt related techniques like um, you know the way that the willow has to be twisted so that the fibres don't snap, and the way that you can form a knot. Uh, I've learned that the willow will curve in a certain way but maybe not in another um, and I have had to work with the material I never work against it so hopefully that shows in the work that the, um, the pieces I make have a flow and they have a they have a curve which is reminiscent of the material that I'm working with but it's still very much an intuitive fingertip knowledge really based on the material itself yeah, I suppose really uh, it's quite an unusual career path to take, <laughs> making baskets and fences and growing willows and whatnot. But the thing that I enjoy most is, is seeing the whole sort of process through from start to finish to um, sticking, you know, sort of twigs in the ground, that these, um, these rods in the ground which readily grow, you know, you just stick them in the ground and they'll, they'll start sprouting, to harvesting, to um, sorting out all the willow myself and then sort of taking it and soaking it and and then making baskets or making fences or panels or you know the, the great opportunity of being able to do projects like this for with, with the Sainsbury Centre it's um, it's a, as a whole that's what I like you know individually you know it's it's I often describe it it's a job of um, never-ending monotonous jobs <laughs> corridor and downstairs space is absolutely wonderful. I think the curve on it is, just fits really well for me. And the fact that they, um, it's quite difficult to think how to deal with it, but it's quite interesting that the ceiling stays horizontal and the floor slopes, so your space gets wider. I think that's quite interesting. And the fact that it goes from an extremely light and lovely airy space, very white at the top, down to actually what is quite a dark um, 
slightly forbidding space at the bottom when you first go down because the gallery there is fairly dusky, isn't it, in its lighting. So I think that's very interesting too. So all of those things, I suppose, are, re are reflected in, in the units I'm making at the moment. I've started at the light end, <laughs> so I'll be getting darker and darker <laughs> as, as the deadline draws nearer. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.